Hello there everyone, it's Carol here from the Crafty Emporium. Welcome back. Nice to see you all again. I wanted to come by today because I wanted to show you a new digital kit that I've created and the items that I've actually created with it. So I'm going to go through the kit first. I'm just going to put them to one side. So this is to make little miniature books, okay? And it's almost like a full kit in that it's got instructions with it as well. It's got an area here so that you can write your own notes as you're going along and watching the videos. And then there's three little ex libre um book plates at the bottom of the page that you can cut out as well page number two is some marbled papers which we will use for the inside page number three is the background paper of which i've already done it on here so basically what you do is you print out this sheet and then you turn it over however best suits your own printer and you print this page out onto the back so that they're double-sided then we've got the actual book covers themselves and there's four different types so we've got this one here this one and then we have got these two here as well all right so you need to print them out onto um not a massively thick card sort of a, a relatively um good weight card and i think if i remember rightly i suggest in the destructions somewhere and yes i did say destructions there you go Print the covers onto plain white card, approximately 120 to 200 GSM. All right, so all the little sets of instructions are there for the kit. Now, you will be able to find this in my Etsy store, and I will put the link in the description box down below. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I actually created was I've done three... Um, there'll be a glitter there. A bit of sparkle. Um, I've created three different little projects using this kit. So the first one was to actually make it into a proper little book, right? And it's got quite a lot of pages in it. Um, and so as you can see here, I've used the marbled paper here as the end papers. And then I've cut out the little ex libri um, part of the design, you know. I've cut that out and stuck it in basically and then I haven't done anything with the pages I've just left them purely as coffee dyed paper so I haven't decorated them at all um, because I didn't think you needed to, to see me doing that so this particular one has got three signatures in it um, and this was my prototype so I've learned a couple of things from it and then I've got uh, an elasticated uh, strip around there to keep it closed but I'm going to show you an alternative to that as well the second project that I made with the kit was I made this little folder and so you lift up the front open it up and it's got the concertina sides in it and then I've just printed off um, I stamped off some images onto some coffee dyed papers so I've got those ready to use in a journal and so i've just stored them within that little folder in there so that's a different type of project that you can make with this kit and then the third project that i made was this little it's almost like a pretend book but when you open it up there's a little box inside and so you can store some little bits and pieces or even a little mini journal within that box as well. So I'm going to show you how to make all three projects, but I'm going to make a start with the book first. Now, if you saw when I tilt this, when the light shines on it, can you see that it's a little bit shiny? Now, I use an inkjet printer. And so if you get the printing wet then the inks will actually run. So what I've done is I've cut out one of the book covers already, and then I'm going to use this product called Spray and Shine. It's by Crafter's Companion. Um, it forms, and I don't know whether you can read that. It says, forms a protective layer over your paper crafting elements. Now, if you're allergic to smells and stuff, um, you might want to have a window open whilst you're doing this. As you can see, I've laid some greaseproof paper down and then I just spray the cover and then, ooh, that's quite pungent, 
and then I would just need to leave that to dry and it forms a protective coating over the actual print itself. Now again, in the description box down below, I have got an Amazon shop and so I've put the link down there and then I've highlighted this product under the glue section so that if you're not sure where to go and purchase it from, then you can get it via Amazon. So I've put the link, um, as I say, down in the description box down below. So I would then need to set that aside and just let that dry dry so what I've done is I've prepared one already and as I say I cut out the piece of paper and I sprayed it and then because of the weight of the paper that I printed it onto although it was quite thick paper it wasn't quite sturdy enough for a book cover so I actually glued it onto a piece of craft cardstock to to give the cover itself a little bit more body I've cut out my Ex Libre plate, book plate, because that was the word I couldn't think of earlier. I've cut myself a little, almost like a template, but I'm going to use it to attach the signatures to. And I've cut it out the same thickness as the spine, so that is going to sit on top. I've then cut out the end papers and I've chosen this one because I just felt that it went better with the outside cover and I've cut two pieces so you will have one on the inside front and one on the inside back all right so you will need two pieces if you're going to use them as end papers. Now I've cut some coffee dyed paper and I've cut them out. I'm not going to give you any measurements because it will depend on how your printer prints them out. So I've measured this surface area of the inside of the cover and I've cut my papers down so that they're the same height as the actual cover itself. And I've cut them out so that they're slightly narrower just fractionally narrower than the width of the front part because we don't want them the full width of this cover because we've got the spine to account for here. So I've measured from this point to this first crease mark and then I've cut them, I don't know whether you can see the difference there, just fractionally smaller. All right, so when you sit it on top flat like that, you can see that there's quite a big gap, but we've got to allow for the fact that there's the spine area here. And I've done six sheets of coffee dyed paper to each signature, and I've already paper clipped them together, and I've done three separate signatures, all right? So what I then did was I used the template, and I positioned it, and I marked off on my papers the point where the holes are going to be all right and then i'm going to sit them on top of my piece of polystyrene use my pokey tool and just poke a hole in those three points there and I'm going to do the same on all of the signatures. And I'm going to attach it to this thin strip of card. So I've got my needle already threaded. So I'm just going to poke the needle and thread through that center hole. And I'm going to do the set of holes that are here on the right hand side. And I'm going to poke it through that hole there. Then I'm going to go through the top hole. And again, place it through the top hole of the pages. Okay, so I've gone down the middle one and brought it up at the top. Now I could take it all the way down to the bottom and do that as an alternative stitch and then come back up at the middle. Or I can go down at the centre and come up at the bottom. So in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the one where we go down at the bottom there. And again come through that hole on the piece of card. Now 
and then I'm going to come back up at the middle middle for diddle okay so at the moment both of these threads are on the left hand side of that center thread so what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke the needle and thread underneath that middle bar so now I've got a thread on each side and then I'm going to tie them together by forming a loop and popping the needle through the loop twice. Okay, so that's that first one now in position. Take the paper clips off and then I'm going to fold those papers over so that they're now out of my way and then paper clip them shut because I want to be able to access the other holes on that piece of card. So again I've got my second signature. I'm going to go down the middle hole. Make sure I leave a, a long enough tail. I'm going to go down that centre hole there. So this is where it becomes that little bit more fiddly now because you've got so many papers that you've got to hold on to. And then through that top hole and through the top hole of the papers Okay, so I've gone down the middle, up at the top. I'm going to take it all the way down to the bottom. And again, poke it through that bottom hole. Turn it over and go back up that middle hole. Make sure that the threads are either side of that middle thread. Form a loop and pop the needle and thread through the loop twice. And that's the second signature in place. And again, take the paper clips off. Fold the pages over to reveal the last set of, of holes so I'm going to paper clip those to that first signature to keep them out of the way <coughs> excuse me now if you don't happen to like sewing in signatures there is another way of doing this and I'll demonstrate it with this little set of signatures here so I bought from the pound shop and believe it or not, they were a pound. <laughs> it's amazing that, isn't it? You go to a pound shop and you buy something for a pound. <laughs> now, these hair bands, hair bobbles, happen to work quite well around the size of the book that we've made. So you could use a hair bobble to hold your signature in place on the spine okay the only problem with it is is it ends up covering over this lovely um spine area here and you'll have three of them because there's three signatures all right so that's something to consider if you don't want to sew in your signatures into place and you just want to use a hair bobble but we're not or i'm not i'm stitching them I'm being sadistic and sewing my signatures in place. But that's as a, a little alternative, just in case you don't want to sew them. So now, because I've pushed those signatures out of the way, I've now opened up the holes to be able to attach the last signature in place. So now I've got those three signatures are now attached 
to this piece of card. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply some Tombow glue on that piece of card where the stitching is and then I'm going to stick it to this centre spine area. So you will have need to put um, the cover onto your, um, blah, 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 what's it called? The creasy thingy, what's it? You know what I mean, don't you? And uh, crease the spine area. Oh heck, what's it called? <sighs> Tell you, I don't like this getting old malarkey. Okay, now I don't want an excessive amount of glue that it's going to squidge out too much on the sides. But I need to make sure that I've covered all of the spine. So although you can see me moving the glue about, I'm not actually putting any more glue out there. I'm just trying to spread about what I've put on. Alright. Make sure my cover and my papers are the right way up. And I'm going to push those papers down to make sure that I've got a really good contact within that spine area. So I'll come back in a minute and I'll show you the next step. So as you can see, I've now got my three signatures in place and they're really close to the outer covers here. So they're really close to this spine area where it actually creases. And it was the score pal was the word I was looking for. See, you weren't any help, were you? You could have told me. So I want them this close because of these end papers that I'm going to put in. So I printed them out, cut them out, and printed on the back, and then I'm just going to fold them in half. You can ink these up if you wish. I'm not going to bother. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on the back side of the left hand side first so I'm going to go up to that folded area and then put glue all over the back here and I'm going to stick that to the inside cover but what I want to make sure is is that fold line is really up close to the actual pages within the book as well because I want to stick one to the other, which you'll see in a moment. Done that a little bit too low down. Come. Not the best gluing in the world that Carol and then I just want to put a line of glue on the back side of the right hand side of that piece of marbled paper because I want this first page to adhere to the end paper just a touch so I'm just going to close the book up so that it will attach itself to it so that when you open it up this is how you will find most books look is that they will attach to that first page within the book itself and then I'm going to open it up again and then with this ex libre I'm just going to the book plate I'm just going to stick it on the inside there and again you can ink this up if you wish I'm not going to bother this time round and then that will sit in there now I'm going to repeat the same process on the inside cover but at the back so again I'm going to fold that in half I'm 
and I'm going to put glue on the back side of this on the right hand side up to that crease mark see if I can get this one to sit in better this time So it's right on top of that crease of the spine. And then I'm going to add a line of glue right on that fold line so that when I close it, it will adhere to that last page within the book. And then what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to use this hair tie as the closure. Right, so that's what I'm going to use for the closure on this one. Now on this version, what I did was I actually put some eyelet holes in the top and the bottom and then I added the piece of elastic and just tied it at the back. You can, if you want to, cover this over with some a, a separate piece of this pa uh, paper and just cover it over so that it's just slightly hidden. You have got the bulk of the knot though, which is one of the disadvantages of using elastic this way because you do end up with that little bit of bulk. You could even put some washi tape over it if you wanted to cover it up. You could even put a pocket on there as well if you wanted to, to just hide the fact that that's where the elastic is. But that just helps to keep that closed shut. So if I just take this hairband off, what you should find now is when we open it up and open that front end paper there, it's already stuck to this first page. And so it looks like it's a proper book that you would purchase from a shop. And so that's the actual book. Now I'm going to do separate videos for the other two projects. I'm going to do a, a another video, I should say, for the other two projects um, because it just takes up too much time trying to show them in one video. But there's one other thing that I wanted to show you just before we go. And that is a second digital kit that I'm going to have up in my Etsy shop. And it's of marbled pages. But again, these are end papers taken from original vintage books. So I've got that one. This green one. This bright, vivid, pinky, ready one. This one. That one. And that one. So those, I think there's six altogether. Let me just check one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so there's six marbled papers there. I've created them so that if you're doing an altered book, of, so if you've got a hard back book and you're altering it and you want to put some end papers in, then they can be used for that particular project as well. So there's the two digital kits that are now going to be available on my Etsy store. I'll see you in the next video if you're going to join me to be able to make the little um, wallet pouch there and to make the one with the little box on the inside. So uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.